free motion quilting on a Bernina 880 is a dream. Now we're gonna go through two different ways of doing free motion quilting in two separate videos. So we're gonna talk about first, which foot you can use if you just want a free motion quilt without any assistance. And you actually have your embroidery foot in the little white box that's in your embroidery box itself. Um, this is the foot you can actually use. It's not the only free motion quilting foot available, but pretty much anything that hops will work. So this is foot number 26. They do make feet that are open toed so you can see where you're going. And I do quilt all my quilts now. I haven't always been a free motion quilter, but I did take time uh, over a year uh, really working on free motion quilting, learning from experts who have classes on Craftsy, like Angela Walters and Leah Day. They are my mentors when it comes to learning free motion quilting. But I've also become very fond of the Bernina Stitch Regulator. So this will be our second video that we do regarding how how to use this, how to set it up, and how wonderful your machine will just make you be a better quilter. The space on a Bernina 880, I mean, this is probably one reason you bought the machine is all this extra space, the great lighting and such. Now, here's one extra tip. Yes, there is a wonderful table that comes with the Bernina, but if you really wanna up your game for free motion quilting, you need to have your machine sunk down in a table in a cabinet, some type of sewing furniture, so everything is flush. Having a large quilt, pushing it around, you will find gravity wants to be your friend and gravity is not your friend, it's your enemy. And so if you do have everything running smoothly across the table, you have a fighting chance of learning and being successful with free motion quilting. Somebody asked me the other day if I would rather have a cabinet or a serger, because that was what they were looking to purchase next. And I went, ooh, hard one. I mean, I love a serger any day, but I would give up a serger for a cabinet if if I had to because I know I would be a much better sewer. It puts me at the right ergonomic level as well. Now, as soon as you're ready to do free motion quilting with just a standard foot, what you need to do is just tell the machine which of the free motion quilting feet you're putting on. I mentioned this is our embroidery foot, so you'll see this as we get started in our embroidery videos, is it's 26. So I'm gonna just go up to the zero to nine and type in 26 so I can pick it. What I wanna do is show you that when I pick this foot, the feed dogs automatically disengage. So you notice that they're yellow now. They have been lowered for you. And so I was gonna say that we need to lower them, but I was reminded that when you pick the foot, which you're gonna to need to anyway, it will lower those uh, feed dogs for you. Next, I would definitely highlight, if you are using a straight stitch, that you, pick and put on your straight stitch throw plate. So as soon as you touch that, it will make sure number one, you don't uh, break a needle. It will also make sure you don't accidentally pick a decorative stitch that would hit this foot, uh, but it does kind of limit everything for you and it really is a nice option when you're free motion quality. I tell you, it really gives you a better quality stitch. So straight stitch throw plate, and a quilting foot. But I did mention, well, if you're using a straight stitch, because you could use other, you can use decorative stitches for free motion quilting. Not everybody does, but there's a time where we do, um, well, I can't pick a zigzag because I told it I'm not ready for it. Um, but doing a zigzag would give you more like a texture as you're free motioning quilt in around. We do that in our Bernina Stitching Cosmos online course. We do uh, a free motion raw edge applique and it it is fun. People are like, I had no idea. This is so fun. And it's actually quite fast and very forgiving. And it looks like you are an artist when you're not. So let's go ahead and get this foot on. I'll show you a couple tricks of starting and stopping. And then we will do a video next on the Bernina Stitch Regulator. Do remember, free motion quilting is a journey. This is not something you just learn overnight. It does take practice. Finding different patterns that uh, suit your style and need and there's just practice 
practice of just some basic techniques. So here's one thing to note. So the last thing I did, I did use my thread cutter. So what we do find is that there's not really a bobbin thread to pull up. So I'm gonna just really start to quilt. And right now my, my thread is on top of my foot. Really, once I actually start to stitch, that will kind of be down and underneath. So here's what you need to know. Since I stopped and I have the needle stopping in the down position, I'm going to just take some time and snip that thread out of my way. As you sew, you're going to find that as you go slow, you get lots of little tiny stitches based on how fast you move your hands. If you sew too fast and move your fabrics really fast, you get really long stitches. So what you're trying to do is find that really kind of balanced stitch length based on how fast you move the fabric and how fast you're sewing. So that is the part that takes the time. And while you're probably gonna be using your Bernina stitch regulator, cause it will do the regulation for you. Um, it is a wonderful tool, but just note that you can do all, everything that you might wanna do without putting that on. You can also adjust the speed. So I know I'm right above here. I'm slowing the speed down, kind of giving myself like a little cruise control so I can start to match my speed with the speed of the machine and have the results that I'm looking for. A lot of times I do match my bobbin thread to my top thread, but I'm gonna peek underneath. You wanna be able to really not tell which side you quilted from. And if so, if you do need to adjust it, uh, you do have tension adjustment for the top thread that you'll either tighten or loosen depending on which way your threads, which side of the fabric your threads are kind of pulling up to. Uh, when you're done, you can use the scissor button or you could actually lift up the foot and pull out your fabric and threads. Then you would have the tails that you usually see people talk about where they take a stitch and pull the threads, the bobbin thread up to the top before they get started. But it just depends on what you're doing um, and some of the techniques that you are learning. But the patterns, that's all practice. And I highly recommend that you check out some of our Craftsy links below that you can learn more about free motion quilting.